This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So don't tell anyone, but I grew up playing an Ibanez RG7620, a seven string guitar. And uh, there was a good period of my life where I'd play a lot of dream theater stuff and also a lot of sort of periphery, that sort of thing, and sort of down tune to maybe drop a, or sometimes even drop a flat. Uh, but you'd still, because it's the seven string, you'd have kind of your extended is it an extended range thing? Technically, maybe not because it's still standard scale length, but you know, you'd still be able to do the widdly widdly stuff because you have your E string on top and you're not just drop tuning the whole guitar. The negative side to seven string guitars, I think is that essentially it feels quite a lot like playing a different instrument. Um, and all of your visualization stuff necessarily has to sort of change so that you can accommodate for having this B string underneath. 
That's even more true of an eight string. So I tried a couple of eight strings, uh, including uh, a Harley Benton one and also uh, the Strandberg, which I had for a few days and I didn't really get on with it, to be honest with you, because having two strings beneath your normal E string, which is for me these days, the way that I sort of, I guess is where I pin a lot of my visualization stuff to, uh, having two strings beneath that just feels a bit weird, even though on bass guitar, I feel fine playing a five string, all a bit strange. Anyway, the benefit I think of a baritone guitar is that essentially you get some of that same kind of feeling of playing a normal size guitar. Now this one doesn't quite do that for me because it's got a wound G string. For some reason that throws me off quite a bit and I end up sort of treating it a bit more like a bass in some ways. And that is also definitely the experience that I've had. There's this thing called the Fender Bass 6 or the Squire Bass 6. And those are designed to sort of be a halfway house between a bass guitar and a guitar. And those, again, they tend to come from the factory set up a bit more like a bass with flat wound strings and stuff. What I like about the Squire, so this is the Squire Paranormal Baritone, um, which for me, it's not an expensive guitar particularly, um, but it is quite solidly built. This one though, the truss rod is kind of seized um, or something, something's up with it anyway. But since it's a baritone guitar that I don't play terribly often, I don't really even mind that much. And when you're doing some of the kind of chuggy low baritone stuff or kind of just picking stuff, uh, I find this to be absolutely fine. And I'm very rarely, if ever, going to try to take a solo on this anyway. So I'm not too worried about kind of um, having super low action or even low action at all on this because I find that when you come to take sort of solo bits, you have the, the negative side, which you don't have with a seven string where seven string, you can just play like normal lead stuff on the baritone. It's very much a different sort of uh, sound to everything you play. Now, the way that I like to think about the baritone guitar and why I think it's interesting is kind of like the opposite of using a capo. Um, so if you imagine, I don't know if you've tried this, maybe if you've got a couple of minutes, try this now, but just sticking a capo on like the third fret, for me, it really does open up a whole different set of sounds that aren't really as accessible without a capo. Um, and so if you were trying to find a moment of inspiration or something, I really find that maybe if you stick a capo on the third, fourth, fifth fret, you get a different sort of sound out of the guitar. It's these open strings that are higher up, maybe more harmonics, maybe something more exciting for the ear because it's fresh as well. So then playing in your open uh, kind of positions has this whole different sound to it. The way I think about the baritone guitar is sort of like you're doing a capo the other way and sort of like drop tuning, um, but without having to do all the arduous work of drop tuning because this thing is sat in the cupboard ready to go in B. So this is the, the key that I have it tuned to. It's B, must be E then. So it's tuned in kind of just normal tuning, but all the way down to B. So all of the chords that I know, they're just happening in a different key and it really does open things up quite nicely. There are a few places that the baritone guitar seems to really thrive. Um, one of those is sort of in the metal scene these days, and particularly bands like Loathe and I think Sleep Token are users of kind of baritone instruments, and probably there's a bunch more if you want to leave them in the comments. I think, uh, is it uh, Mike Mushok from the band Stained? Wow. I think that chap, he used to have a signature guitar and I think that was a baritone guitar. He used to have an Ibanez and I think he moved to PRS. I used to kind of look at that guitar, the Ibanez version, really want one for quite a long time. Um, then the other kind of world where this, this works, I think really nicely, just kind of just straightforward, I don't know, not, what's the word, like songwritery stuff, you know, where you're kind of doing simple things, but maybe you want them to sound a little bit different I mean, there's quite a rootsy kind of tone, I think, to, to some of this baritone stuff. And then Mark Lettieri obviously has a, a, a penchant for um, 
baritone stuff for funk stuff which again has a really cool sound that kind of midway point between bass and guitar it sits in a really interesting space i think so it doesn't necessarily just have to be kind of chuggy stuff but you can do interesting things on it and again i think in a studio it might be a, a, a guitar that you'd use to add a different part so basically when you're playing in this guitar if you were playing in b minor on a real guitar you'd have to be playing in a or F sharp minor to, to, to get the same kind of sound. So, and you get just a different vibe. Let me just, oh, a really kind of big sound. So we'd be playing uh, our, our strings. We've got a, a B, an E, an A, C, F sharp, and another B. So then if we're playing, just such a cool vibe. interesting I think instrument and it just allows you to play kind of as you are capable of playing without really having to learn anything particularly new and unlock a whole world of these interesting sounds so I think I wouldn't necessarily encourage you to go out and grab a hugely expensive baritone guitar but I think what you kind of get even at this lower lower end of the market the Squire Paranormal Baritone Cabronita bit of a mouthful these I think are really quite lovely instruments made in China um, but you know fairly solid except for this one stripping the truss rod but that might have been my fault who knows um, but you do end up with a, an instrument that can be used um, and you don't really have to be too fussy about it it's just really quite a cool sounding instrument I think if you're a baritone player let people know in the comments uh, how do you use a baritone are you a chuggy player are you a country player do you use it just to add different textures to tunes? Uh, do you use one at all? If you've been thinking about getting one, what are the bargains that you can get in the world of baritones? Um, and, and let me know your thoughts. I did have one of the the, the loathe kind of Squire uh, baritone offset, you know, the Jazzmaster one. And I thought it just felt like a really massive kind of instrument that I didn't love. I really prefer this one kind of to play and to hold. So that's why I sold that. Thank you for stopping by and uh, feel free to like and subscribe. I'll put the Helix presets in the folder. The links for that are on Gumroad.